One of the interesting things about being a YouTube critic with a somewhat high profile is that pretty soon you start to get recommendations. A lot of recommendations. Everything from 1950s classics to modern day blockbusters to obscure Swedish experimental art house films that have been seen by literally dozens. And that's not even counting all the other TV shows, video games, mangas and novels that get sent my way. Which is great and all, but when you're only one man who spends half his life passed out on the kitchen floor in a puddle of his own urine, it becomes rather challenging to keep up with. But sometimes, just sometimes, enough people will lift their voices all at once to rise above the clamour and implore the drinker to pull his finger out and actually review something that they want for a change. And that thing turned out to be Blue Eye Samurai, an eight part animated show on Netflix about a mixed race swordsman journeying through feudal Japan on a quest for revenge against the four white men who destroyed her life. Her journey takes her from snow covered mountain villages to storm shrouded coastlines to the very heart of the Japanese capital, and along the way she recruits an unlikely band of friends, allies, and well, some that are a bit more complicated. And fuck me, is it good. Blue Eye Samurai is a perfect example of how animation can be used to tell a smart, mature and often violent story filled with complex themes and ideas, subtly rendered and superbly voiced characters that you always want to know more about, and do all of it using some of the most gorgeous and visually striking artwork that I've seen outside of Arcane. You know, it's not very often that someone as jaded and drunk as me sits down to watch a single episode of a show only to find that it's now three hours later and I'm caught in that perfect dilemma of wanting to race to the end so I know how the story unfolds but reluctant to do it because I don't want it to end. It's that damn good. Anyway, grab the fake samurai sword that you ordered off eBay for less than a hundred dollars but still like to pretend wouldn't shatter the first time it was used in an actual fight and let's talk about the plot. So the story begins in a 17th century Japan that's been closed to all foreigners for decades now. White people are effectively outlawed there, and anyone of mixed race is treated as a subhuman outcast. Japan might well have shut itself off, but can it shut the rest of the world out? Well, into this charming environment strides Mizu, a female swordmaster on a mission to kill the four white men that she believes are still hiding somewhere in the country, one of whom happens to be her father. Hence the blue eyes that she has to keep hidden at all times. And that's not the only thing she's hiding. <laughs> yeah, I know her gender is treated as a reveal at the end of the first episode, but seriously, if you couldn't pick it up from the very obviously female voice actor, I don't know what to tell you man, maybe film and TV really isn't for you. Anyway, Mizu soon runs into a local pimp who tries to shoot her with a western pistol, a weapon that's illegal in Japan now. She knows that if she follows the trail of guns, it'll eventually lead her to the man that she's looking for, so after showing the pimp the error of his ways, she heads off in pursuit of her target. She's soon followed by a noodle chef named Ringo who dreams of becoming a samurai himself one day, which is a bit of a challenge because I imagine sword fighting is rather tricky when you don't have hands, but whatever. Her adventures soon bring her into conflict with a young swordsman named named Tygen, who used to bully her as a kid, and the shame of being defeated by her launches him on a quest for revenge that spans the entire season and might just change it to something a bit more complicated by the end. The closer Mizu gets to her target, the more she begins to uncover a plot to overthrow the government of Japan and flood the country with guns and western corruption. But who can she ultimately trust? How far is she willing to go in her quest for revenge? And will her lust for violence and death end up burning down the entire country? Since I'm about to start lavishing a great deal of praise on this show, I might as well get the superficial stuff out of the way first. As you've probably guessed from the footage that I've been showing you, this show is visually stunning. The animation is fluid, expressive and perfectly rendered, character models look incredible and really express every little trick and mannerism you'd expect from real people. Every new scene feels like a work of art, some of the backgrounds and locations actually had me pause and playback just to look at them, and overall, it really feels like a lot of thought and care when into every frame of this show. But just like with Tatiana, if you want to get to the interesting stuff you have to delve in a little deeper. <laughs> There's a lot of thematic ideas at play in Blue Eye Samurai, like the conflict between traditionalism and technological progress, the subjugation and empowerment of women, the struggle for people to rise beyond their social status, the mistake of deeply ingrained discrimination against anyone who's different, and the corrupting influence of outside cultures. Damn, it's actually kind of weird to see a modern show openly acknowledge that mashing two wildly different cultures together doesn't always result in some magical melting pot of diverse rainbow-coloured utopianism. 
optimism. But what's impressive is that the show generally manages to tackle contentious themes like this without ever coming across as preachy and pandering. Instead, it all feels like a natural component of the story and world. It's never pushed too hard or used as an excuse for some obnoxious lecture about diversity and inclusion. And as a result, well, it works. And one of the reasons it works so well are the characters. I can't begin to tell you how many movies and shows I've seen where I was completely disengaged because the characters were so fucking boring, lifeless and empty that I didn't care whether they lived or died. But almost everyone in Blue Eye Samurai feel like real, fleshed out individuals with their own quirks, personalities, goals and ambitions. Like Tygen, who could have been just another arrogant childhood bully that needs to be taught a lesson, but ends up having one of the most complex and complete character arcs of the entire show. Or Akimi, the pampered daughter of a rich lord who aspires to be more than just a piece of meat to be sold off to the highest bidder. Or Ringo, the well-meaning servant who was born without hands but never allows his disability to define him and instead aspires to do something great with his life. He's never used as a vehicle for pity like so many other writers would have done, instead he's just another person trying to find the right path in his life. Damn man, even Fowler, who could have come across as a two-dimensional villain, has a pretty tragic backstory that really helps you to understand why he is who he is. But my biggest praise of all has got to go to Mizu, who's a compelling, interesting, flawed and sympathetic protagonist. And I can't tell you how refreshing it is to have a modern story built around an actual strong female character instead of the STRONG FEMALE CHARACTER so beloved by modern Hollywood who just kind of breezes through the story with nary a flaw or difficulty in sight. Mizu is a skilled swordsman and a dangerous warrior who can hold her own against almost anyone, but the difference with Blue-Eyed Samurai is that it actually takes the time to show how she got there. It never shies away from her flaws and weaknesses as a character, and it definitely never holds back on the hardship and suffering. Mizu really has to fight hard to overcome odds that are increasingly stacked against her, and make no mistake, she doesn't always win or succeed, and she isn't a conventional hero. Just when you think the story's gonna wimp out and take the same option, something will happen that totally shifts your perception of her character. She also gets absolutely fucked up multiple times throughout the series, she makes mistakes at critical moments, she can be outsmarted and outfought, and sometimes she even needs help, guidance, protection and encouragement from other people. All of this is to say that she's a fucking brilliantly written protagonist that I was fully invested in within the first episode, and a great example of how to craft a strong, capable female lead who isn't just a one-dimensional feminist power fantasy who can do everything better than the boys. Jesus, Mizu gets more character development in a single episode than Rey did in three entire movies. The other tendency with female-led stories desperate to avoid even the vague perception of female weakness and vulnerability is to portray the male villains as laughably incompetent fools who are never allowed to pose a serious threat. But again, this show takes the smarter and more satisfying option by treating its antagonists with just as much respect as the heroes. Almost without fail, the antagonists of Blue Eye Samurai are depicted as smart, strong, resourceful and dangerous, often more so than Mizu herself. Fowler is a fucking terrifying, sadistic, menacing figure, the kind of man who plans for every contingency, who's absolutely ruthless in the pursuit of his goal, and who really feels like he could do anything at any moment. He's a worthy enemy who tests Mizu to her limits, and perhaps even beyond them, and as a result you find yourself rooting for her to pull through. Ultimately, Blue Eye Samurai surprised me in almost every possible way, gripping me from the first tense confrontation to the final epic battle, and delivering a finished product that was so good, I actually had to double check to make sure it even came from the West. It's proof positive that when you get the right people together and prioritise storytelling over THE MESSAGE, it is actually possible to tell good stories that deserve to be seen. And when season 2 comes out, I'll definitely be ready for it. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.